is soft and balmy, and mischief is in the hearts of the three little Bruins, led by Elmer, who likes to start the day with a good scratch. The fields are covered with Maytime beauty, but what's going to happen even the daisies won't tell. Every day is a happy day for the merry trio, but what they crave is action. And right now there is more than spring in the air, and the Bruins know it. He wants to play, but the Cubs don't like his game. Here's a good place for a morning bath, and maybe some fish for breakfast. Leave it to Elmer to get maroon. He's high, but not so dry. No hook and line needed here. No spinners, no plugs, no flies, no bait, and maybe no fish. Alec tries his luck while Elmer watches. He figures that one good swipe of his paw will bring results but the fish ignore him. No, the three musketeers will have to look elsewhere for breakfast. But before further exploration start, the problem is to reach the mainland. And there's only one way to get over, that's to get wet. And that's something Elmer doesn't like. However, he just has to get in the swim. Across the fields they go, full of pep, but not full of breakfast. Elmer sees some domestic animals that look foreign to him. Molly the cow was contented until Elmer arrived. She's never seen a bear before, but she's got nothing on Elmer. He's never seen a cow before. It's a case of out staring each other, but Molly wins. And Elmer is up a tree. The suspense is beginning to get on Elmer's nerves. But Molly seems unconcerned. Enough is enough, so Elmer takes a chance and decides to come down. So, so far, so good. But he wishes he weren't quite so alone. Molly is still curious. But curiosity never killed a cow or even a little bear out for adventure. Now to catch up with Alec and Oscar. They can't be far away. Mr. Gander stands in their way for the moment. A strange looking fowl with a foul look in his eye. He's hissing the bears and being good showmen, they can't stand for that. So they retreat and make for the barn, still seeking food and adventure. Leave it to Elmer to investigate everything. No wonder he's always in trouble. Now it's old Dobbin that he's annoying. He thinks the horse has a funny face. And Dobbin thinks the same about Elmer. It's another case of who can outstare whom. Ah, the hayloft. The perfect spot for some rough house. Elmer figures there may be some hen's nests one flight up. And climbing the ladder is easy, but the hay is slippery and it's not so easy to make a landing. Maybe there are some eggs in the nest. Meanwhile, Alec and Oscar have their own difficulties. They want to join Elmer, but who goes first? That's what the fight's about. No luck in the hayloft. And they're getting more hungry every minute. It's nearly lunchtime, and they haven't had breakfast yet. Uh-oh, barrels like these should be filled with something. Maybe something to eat. Well, there's only one way to find out. Elmer finds out. It's pickle brine. And his calls for help interest Alec. Now they're both up to their necks in trouble. And out they come a couple of well-pickled Bruins. No breakfast yet, just a lot of queer animals and pickle barrels. But everything needs investigating, even this big tub. Three bears and a tub. Velmer finding something to eat at last. It tastes funny, and it's full of bubbles, but it's not solid food. So let's get going. Elmer, Alec, and Oscar see no wrong in taking a bottle away from a baby. After all, a baby has regular feeding hours and nothing to worry about. 
but it's different with theirs. Mmm, oh boy, that's good. If the bottle weren't so large, he'd swallow that too. Well, the milk serves as an appetizer, and the tricky trio figures there must be more milk around, and of course, at the dairy. Plenty of pails, but how much milk? Alec and Oscar head the investigating committee. While Elmer does some investigating on his own. Yes, there's milk in the milk can, but it's at the bottom. And this is the way Elmer figures he can reach it. Of course, if he didn't have such a big head, he'd accomplish something. If his head goes in, it'll never come out. Never give up is Elmer's motto. Never give up until you have to. Meanwhile, Alec feels like a little relaxation. He'll play rocking horse in the churn. But Elmer's found another milk can which offers the same problem. Alec's really getting churned up. He wants to be a butter bear. There's Elmer again with victory in sight. He's just plain obstinate. Not much success here. So with breakfast still in the offing, it's time to get started to new pastures. By the clock, it's lunchtime, and folks are preparing for the midday meal. The house is filled with the tempting aroma of appetizing food and homemade pies, which of course have to cool while the folks go out. But that's where they make their mistake. And this is where three hungry little Bruins come in. Mmm, a luscious lemon meringue pie is worth fighting over. There's plenty for all, but Oscar is too greedy to let Alec have his share. Elmer gets a whole pie, just the way the old-time movie comedians got them, all at once with a splash. Breakfast at last. While the folks are away, the bears will play. Ah, oh, but there must be more good food indoors, and the way to find out is to open the door, and there you are. The kitchen is filled with the nicest things, and Elmer and his pals are going to make the best, or the worst of it. Now for the next course. Elmer gets an omelet. Flour is nice and white and soft and good to eat, says Alec. Lots of vitamins, too. There's trouble ahead, up on the cabinet or down on the floor. The three rascals have certainly had their fun and their breakfast. Now, if they're wise, they'll get going. It's about time for the folks to return. Yes, here they are, and will they be surprised? What a sight, what rubble. Who could have done it? Out they come on the double quick. They've had their food, they've had their fun, so they should worry what happens when the three little Bruins make mischief. In the golden days of summer, the three little Bruins roam from their home in the wilderness, and Elmer, as usual, is the ringleader of the trio. When the others romp and play, he's just pretending to admire the wildflowers. They are certain to hear from him before the day is done. There's the first slip, but that won't stop them. Elmer just seems to tag along, but sooner or later he'll be sure to have an inspiration. He isn't one to give up, although he may seem to be turning back. Chiseltooth the beaver arrives to see what's going on. Bruins don't like water or anything in it. That's why they try so hard to keep from getting wet when it would be so much easier to drop down and wade across. But no, they're stubborn. Oscar and Alec are going to walk that log if it takes all summer even if old Chiseltooth watches the fun. It's bad enough to slip and look silly without being stared at. Now, this time they'll make it. Come on, pal, and stay on your four feet for just four feet. Hey, wait for me, says Elmer. I'll fix those two if they leave me behind. The 
the promise of further adventure beckons, and off they go, forgetting all about Elmer, and he doesn't like it. People never realize what the three Bruins are capable of doing, nor do they hear Elmer call his pals, but they get the signal. All seems peaceful and quiet, but thrills and excitement are a Bruin. Excitement are three Bruins when Elmer gets there. The cathedral peace and calm of the woodland is broken only by the soft music of the river, with not a sound from barefooted intruders. attracts Elmer. Oscar and Alec always make the same mistake. Never seem to realize how barefaced Elmer is. When opportunity knocks on his door, it's wide open. The wild tumbling river makes a sound of laughter in the woods. And for a reason, it knows Elmer. Alec wonders if he can swim, if necessary. Well, somebody may have to swim before this day is over. Don't upset the boat, pal. That would spoil Elmer's plan. He knows exactly what he's doing. One end of the canoe is on a rock, but Elmer doesn't lift it off. He wants it all to look accidental. That does the trick. Now, how in the world did we get adrift? Elmer, all innocent, says they're all in the same boat now. The laughter of the racing river grows louder, and it begins to sound like the laugh of a villain, which is something that Elmer hadn't bargained for. He didn't want to scare himself. But that's just what's happening. Elmer wishes now that he wouldn't get such smart ideas. There's nothing but swift rapids and tumbling water ahead. He never saw water in such a hurry. It couldn't be in more of a hurry if it were going to a fire. No chance to get out of this, not even in the narrow places. Down they go to a sudden stop. Well, he got them into this, so it's up to him to get them out. And that's his big mistake. Bear a hand, pals, help me. It's sink or swim, so he swims and makes it. Safe for the moment. His pals are off again on another wild ride, and the river laughs louder than ever because Elmer is still in trouble. Expert canoeists probably would have come to grief long before this just by trying to be skillful in the wild racing waters. But two frightened little Bruins shoot the rapids in a succession of miracles and continue on right side up. They're going places in a hurry. They don't know where, and that's what worries them, because somewhere ahead they hear the roar of falling water. Something tells them their luck is running out as fast as the river is running out of the valley and sweeping them on. What's that they hear? The ride becomes wilder and more frightening as they're carried along towards certain disaster. Now Oscar and Alec begin to swallow their fears, and plenty of water, too. The bottom of the capsized canoe looks awfully good, and so does the shore. Goodbye, Old Man River. You look very good to us from a distance. Meanwhile, Elmer is all shut in by high rocks. Not so high, though, that he can't be seen. Uh-oh, his foot slipped. Down goes Elmer. Now the swirling, tumbling river really laughs. Oscar and Alec realize their helplessness. Help is close at hand, and yet, poor Elmer might as well be miles away. 
Nothing can get him out of this or slow down his speed. If he ever hits a rock, he'll be a battered Bruin. His two pals hold their breath as Elmer is swept toward another fall. Down he goes. And a thoroughly frightened little Elmer now, and wishing he hadn't been so smart. The farmer's boy thinks he's a goner, but he doesn't know Elmer, who has gotten out of worse things in a river. His spirits may be dampened, but there's still plenty of spunk left in him, as well as a natural distrust of mankind, even the kindest of mankind, trying to give him a little lift. little bear, run home to your mama, and hereafter, if you must play around the river, play around it, but not in it. As if Elmer needed any such advice. Hey, wait for me. I'm going your way. Elmer could travel faster in the river. At last, a little good luck. He can use some nourishment. All right, little Bruin, just climb up and take the bottle like a baby. After all that swimming, you must be as hungry as a big bear. Forgotten now are all the terrors of the river. He'll never go canoeing again. But of course, there may be other opportunities for fun and excitement. He thinks he'd better be going. He might be missing something. His nose tells him his pals are somewhere nearby. And here they are, hoping something will turn up, if it's only Elmer. They might know that a bad penny always turns up, and Elmer is definitely on the scent. So it's back to their home in the wilderness again, the three little Bruins who hope never to see another canoe.